Okay, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm Zelig. I'm going to talk about uh, coding lab, a uh, second school for system programmers. So, uh, before I talk about uh, what coding lab is, we need to know what coding is. So, at last year's ISFT, um, Ian Corner presented a paper on the time of the research, pointing out the cost of verification, uh, introducing our attempt to reduce the cost of writing and formally verifying the functional correctness of system code, in particular, file systems. So, Cogent is a uh, total polymorphic, uh, pure functional programming language, and system programmers write their uh, systems code in Cogent language, and the Cogent compiler compiles that to high performance C. At the same time, a proof is generated by the compiler showing that the C implementation um, actually correctly implements the semantics of Cogent program. So on top of Cogent, the user manually specify the behavior of that program in Isabel Hair of the Logic and manually establish this connection between Cogent and the uh, high-level abstract stack, meaning that uh, all the behaviors observed in the Cogent program can also be observed um, in the high level stack. So Cogent features a uh, uniqueness type system which allows for destructive updates, which are essential in writing high performance low level code. And at the same time, it exposes a uh, functional semantics to the proof so that equational reasoning uh, can be then on the uh, upper half of the proof, which is much simpler than proving on top of a, an uh, imperative language. So there's no runtime in the uh, coding language, which means uh, memory management has to be handled exclusively by the programmer. But uh, the good thing is that uh, in our framework, we don't have to trust an extra uh, black box of uh, runtime system or have collected. So we case studied uh, applying this coded approach to file systems which rely on minimum sharing so that uh, the uniqueness type system is more of a uh, feature rather than an obstacle in our way. We focused on BuildFS, which is a flash file system that we designed from scratch, and uh, the second extended file system for it. So, Codent is very restrictive. The expressiveness of that is basically a much uh, substantially smaller subset of C, which excludes unsafe programs and excludes partial programs, excludes those that violate the uh, uniqueness constraints. Fortunately, we can still implement file systems using coding. So the vast majority of coding code can be represented, uh, can be uh, written in the coding block with an extra bit outside of it, which consists of loop iterators, common data structures, um, and uh, memory management code, which can be shared across many file system implementations. So that's basically a, uh, a one-off effort. So the verification story uh, is that we need to take these ADTs and wrap the code into account and link that with the coding compiled C code. So for the high level uh, functional correctness, the users, programmers, need to manually prove the refinement all the way from C to the Isabel uh, code. So uh, when we developed these two file systems in Codent, we uh, observed something very interesting. Let's see. So, BuildFS is a uh, file system that we designed with verification in mind. So, the thought of having this new uh, flash file system is to make a uh, system which is amenable for verification. Whereas, yes, it should is just a thought of the native implementation in it. So, Sorry, is X2 a common Linux library or something? I've not heard of it before. It's, it's the a, just a native file uh, <laughs> system in the like, Linux kernel. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
So QBFS flavors strongly towards a uh, modular design so that the entire program is decomposed into smaller components, <coughs> whereas for native uh, file system written in C, it's basically very uh, heavily state-based and object-oriented. That's, well, the way that uh, traditional file systems are designed. So for that reason, we can write idiomatic coding code for UBFS and uh, not so much for EXE2, but we can still transliterate the, the uh, EXE2 implementation uh, from C to potent, and it also works. So coming to verification, which is the aim of the project, uh, we can actually specify these uh, properties about QBFS uh, on top of this uh, functional semantics and prove them using equational reasoning for EXC2. No. <laughs> so what has gone wrong in that design? One symptom is like that. So we have functions F and G. Uh, oops, it doesn't have colors. Okay. Uh, so F and G access to a various of global variables. So when we turn that into a functional program, or most specifically, when we turn that into a project, systems programmers tend to do these at a global state. And throw all of them into the global state because it's irrefutable that uh, global variables belong to a global state. That's natural right? So we have functions and F and G, and uh, they take the state as the input and the state as the output. Well, the type doesn't give us any information and essentially every program, every function can be given such a type signature. So that totally breaks the modularity. What we would like to see is something um, sort of like that. So from the type level, we have more information and in particular, uh, cogent type system allows us to express the uh, read-only input, so that we know I will take some input, which is read-only, we only need to inspect that, and we are updating the op, op store given the state. This is the true state, just like the IO one in the hustle. Another thing, another symptom, is that, uh, well, for first file system, we need to interact with the user APIs that might be the uh, VFS layer uh, from Linux. And uh, system APIs, like uh, the web drivers, so they are all in C. And as, as I said before, uh, ADTs are in C. We have some global states which are in C. Even more, some performance critical uh, code that forces us to read them in C. So we just wrap them in a C wrapper so that it uh, satisfies the uh, contract given, given by the cogent uh, type system. We wrap them. All the rest can be implemented in code. OK. So we see that uh, this intervening in the, um, in the entire space, that uh, the, the cogent code is largely fragmented. And uh, lots of these cogent code are actually wrapper, so that uh, it doesn't uh, give us much uh, <coughs> semantics and doesn't help us to, uh, in the verification process. So ideally, we would possibly want something like this, so we push all these parts to the, to the edges, and we have a solid chunk of coding code in the middle that we can uh, verify using Christian rules. So coming to the implementation, uh, we have this spectrum, and uh, how much you want to write in cogent is, is a hard question, and you don't really know the answer uh, before you attend. So we roughly have these lines showing the performance and how much uh, equational reasoning you can get from cogent, but that, that's very rough idea and it's not accurate at all. You have to analyze it uh, case by case. So the question of 
language boundary uh, is another challenge. So here, we introduce quotient out a uh, language extension to quotient, which tries to solve uh, the issues that I just mentioned. So quotient up is a uh, general purpose string complete language, which allows general recursion and uh, recursive data types. Also, it has no uniqueness constraints as we have quotient. So that's just roughly like, like uh, uh, conventional functional programming language, like Daniel or Haskell. And it has more features that I'll come to in a second. So we put coding up here in between coding and the uh, Isabel struct spec and reestablish these connections as before. So all these proofs are still manual. Uh, we are not reducing the uh, manual verification output. So the first thing coding up gives you is that you can design your program in a single language instead of these uh, <coughs> uneven levels of abstractions in two different languages. So we have this uh, uniform high level thinking in code and art. So previously, if we design our programs from cogent and from the ADTs, like the C ADT, what would happen is that uh, these languages are too low level. Even cogent is too low level for design because you still need to be concerned about uh, uh, how to avoid aliasing and whether you want to allocate on the heap or on the stack, that kind of low level things. So uh, it doesn't give you a uh, high-level view of, of the entire thing. Alternatively, if we try to design the program from the Isabel spec, it possibly gives you a high-level view of the whole story. But uh, because the Isabel spec is just a set of predicates uh, in high order logic. So it, it's, it's not a program. It doesn't give you enough guidance in how to implement your program in Cogent. <coughs> so here, we can now start from Cogent up, which serves as a, uh, an excusable specification, which, uh, and, and also a functional prototype, so that it has the connection to both the Cogent program and the high-level uh, Isabel specification. And from there, we can gradually, incrementally, refine your code and app program to code and NC as you desire. So uh, we advocate for this uh, like refinement-based uh, development. So this top-down approach requires code and apps to have the ability to connect to code and to see. Luckily, that. Uh, they are easy because coding up is a uh, is mainly a language extension to cogent and uh, the coding up to cogent interface is uh, trivial. And uh, with the other interface from coding up to C, we can just borrow that from the cogent language. We also like uh, um, cogent up to, to support refinement because the, the whole development process is this refinement uh, driven. So for example, like the refinement uh, relations, these lemmas and auxiliary lemmas and other boilerplate code can be generated by a compiler. How do we know that uh, our cogent up model is correct when we design that? The so one thing um, Cogent R provides is a dependent uh, type system with some automatic type checking mechanism. After all, it's uh, system programmer oriented. Uh, so that you can specify some of the properties like bounce checking 
in your tires. And for more complicated properties, what we can do here is property-based testing. So, for example, a quick check is a Haskell library which does that. Um, by means of cat checking and property-based testing, we gain some confidence that the coding up model is correct without doing any proofs. Also, the good thing about property-based uh, property testing is that uh, it allows us to test our design. So you don't really have to uh, prove any of your properties, the many proof, I mean the upper many proof, uh, to, to show that uh, your design is correct. But what you can do is that you just try to specify these properties. And if you can't, that's a signal showing that your design might be problematic in the future if you really want to verify that. <coughs> the general idea of uh, testing helps proof is uh, applicable here. So how do we know that uh, cogent and uh, the C ADTs are correct? The same idea applies. We can use quick check library to prove or to test refinement. And we know that uh, they are correct after testing with respect to the coding up model. So if we want to try to shorten the gaps between coding up and the high level stack, or between coding up and the coding program, what we can do instead of single layer of coding up program here, we can adopt this multi-layer design where each layer is a refinement of the layer of So as before, we just manually um, establish the refinement proof between these levels. But note, we can use quick check in the early stage to make sure that uh, it's roughly correct. So one typical setting is that uh, we have a non-determinist code enough and a deterministic the non-deterministic um, coding uh, is very close to the non-deterministic Isabel spec. So if you have several layers of this, gradually refine your top level uh, theories so that you get a more structured proof in the future. So we want to support uh, non-determinism in the current up language so that this common setting can be simplified. So where we are at the moment, uh, it's uh, very early stage work. So we, at the moment, use Haskell as a uh, prototype for instead of the, the real code and R language. And uh, we use Haskell here to just do a uh, proof of concept. So we have the preliminary code and R language design, but uh, it's more on the uh, uh, pen and paper stage. So we have the whole uh, quick check framework in Haskell again. So the next thing that we really want to do is to uh, test this idea, test this methodology, whether it actually works. So we want to try out this uh, on real file system in, uh, design and implementation, and we can, in parallel, uh, implement code uh, and that's my talk. Um, and uh, if you're interested, have a look at our website. Thank you. Um, so we have plenty of time for questions. Um, and I just uh, this this submission was just an extended abstract, so there's no discussion for this uh, this talk. Can I just say that actually all the extended abstracts are also on the uh, workshop question. Uh, yeah. I have a question. Um, uh, so the quick check, so, so the idea there is that you were using the quick check to sort of establish these relationships and then sort of do quick testing, but then you were 
were still doing the manual proofs afterwards. When you started doing that, did you find a difference in sort of how you did the proofs? I mean, did it did did you learn something from the quick check that helped you do those proofs? I, great question. Uh, one of the directions that we want to go is to um, try to automate some of these refined proofs um, given the um, pre-check properties and the pre-check results, especially from the um, results. Thank you. 